Hello, I'm Microsoft MVP, Tom Morgan. I get asked a lot about how I use OBS in Microsoft Teams. I've already done a video about my setup, which I'll link in the description below, but I thought it was time to do a 2021 update because some of the tools of you uh, I've been using have changed and some of the techniques have changed. And also spoiler, there's also big still problems with kind of how it all works and, uh, and the whole setup. So nothing's perfect and uh yeah that's the case here but i thought it'd be worth just going into some of the detail and just showing you how i work and and how it all works so the very first thing is why obs and this isn't going to be a video about like how to set up obs so it works in teams there's a million of those videos already for me the reason i use obs is pretty much 50 50 split between the capabilities it gives you for video but also the capabilities it gives you for um sound and for audio so the video ones let's cover those off real quick the nice thing about teams meetings um is it's very much like live streaming so if you think about live streaming it's not pre-recorded it's not edited you have to do everything on the fly that's exactly like a teams meeting or a zoom meeting right where the changes you make need to happen instantly so if i want you know if i'm presenting in a teams meeting or a live stream and i want to zoom in on my face that needs to happen instantly okay that's not something i put in in the edit i need to be able to have it take place straight away and that is something that obs can really help with obs lets you have all these different scenes you can set them all up and you can then either click a button in obs to do it or if you've got something like a stream deck so uh, something like this, Whoop. something like this, a stream deck you can use um, to quickly change your views. Um, I've got these different views here so I can, as I click them, it changes. So I can do that in a meeting and I can quickly change the view. I can change it up. I can zoom in, zoom out. Um, and doing that kind of holds people's attention um, and keeps people interested if I'm presenting something that takes a long time to kind of present. So that's the first thing I find it useful for. I use the virtual camera in OBS. So in OBS, uh, you can, under the controls, you can start a virtual camera. That shows up um, as a webcam in your Teams or your Zoom client. So you can just switch to that camera and then you're off. So that's the audio, uh, sorry, that's the video part done. The audio part, um, why do I use the audio part? Okay, so this is kind of a bit harder to set up. I know a lot of people just use OBS for video and they don't use it for the audio part. I do often use OBS for the audio part um, because I think the quality is better. The reason for that, so I use a Blue Yeti microphone, which is um, a condenser microphone and it's a good microphone, um, but there are better microphones out there. And I've been listening to a lot of different microphones. I really like the sound of some of the more expensive microphones, but I'm not yet there like in being able to just kind of purchase one of those and be done with it. What I've found though with OBS is that I can fake that sound using filters in OBS. So I can take this microphone here and make it sound way better than it might otherwise do. I want that in Teams and I want that in my Teams and Zoom meetings because if I'm doing an interview with someone, I want that to sound really good. And a lot of those interviews happen in Teams or in Zoom. So I want them to happen and sound really good over there too. So I want to use some of that OBS technology, if you like, um, to make it happen. And out of the box, it's a little bit tricky to do that. Um, so I've found uh, a kind of a good way around it. Let me, let me take you through the filter stuff first for microphones because that's worth covering off um so let me quickly show you what my obs setup looks like then you can see what i'm seeing whoa um i forgot that might happen that reminded me about something that i a tip that i would say don't do in teams and zoom and that is don't use obs to share out your screen okay um for me i don't i'd say just don't do that because um Teams especially, and I don't know about Zoom, but I imagine it's kind of the same, does a good job of figuring out where you are, where your face is and where your body is in a shot and cropping to that. Because if you think about this uh, video that you're watching, it goes out to kind of these edges here. Um, if you're viewing this same feed inside your Teams client or your Zoom client, actually it might not look quite like this. It might be more portrait, it might be a different size, you might have other people in like other boxes. So the software kind of crops your head in to be center shot. And that works really well. 
it doesn't work well if you switch to doing screen share. Because if you, as soon as you switch to doing screen share, then um, like the software hasn't got anything to go on. And so it's just going to kind of crop randomly. It won't fill frame. And you're going to get complaints from people that say they can't see all of your screen. They can't see where your mouse is and all the rest of it. So for me, I would say if you want to share content, do it in the native, like the, the Teams or the Zoom or whatever client you're using for your video conferencing. Don't try and do it in OBS as well. Keep OBS for video, like camera content, not screen content. Okay. All right. So um, let's do this. So we are going to, um, this is going to look kind of crazy because you've got that kind of picture in picture thing. But what I want to bring your attention to is down here. So I've got all these different scenes and you can see that my microphone is set up here. The thing I wanted to show you is the filters that I apply to my microphone. So if I go here and go filters um, and let's just try and make it a bit bigger so you can kind of see it. So I've got all these filters going on. So if I turn these all off. OK, so this is what the the Blue Yeti microphone kind of sounds like natively. And if I was to jump on a Teams call or a Zoom call and just choose Blue Yeti from the list, this is pretty much what it would sound like. However, I like to not do that, turn all these on because I think it sounds much better. So how do I get the audio from OBS out into Teams and Zoom? It's kind of a bit complicated. It's not built into OBS, but that's okay. I use a separate program um, that's called VB Audio Cable, I think it's called. It kind of installs as a driver and it gives you two things when it installs. It gives you a new speaker and it gives you a new microphone um, both as inputs so if i show you so the way it works imagine literally like a cable so you've got like two devices at each end an input and an output and anything you put into the input shows up on the output okay it's literally like a cable so you can tell obs take the output from obs and put it into the input and then you can go over to Teams and Zoom, whatever, and say, okay, my microphone is gonna be that output cable. Okay, it's literally like a virtual cable. So the way I have that set up in OBS, um, if I go to settings and go to audio, so I've set that cable input device as my monitoring device. So VB audio virtual cable, that's what the thing's called, okay? Um, I've set that as my monitoring device. That means that all the audio, as well as going to OBS's standard output for recording and all the rest of it, it will also go to this monitoring device. So this, this input here. And then over in Teams and Zoom, I then choose uh, the cable output. There's, a, there's an alternative one called cable output as the microphone source. And I find that works really well. The other thing you have to do, by the way, for every audio source that you want to show up like that you need to go to the advanced audio properties of that input and make sure that you are sending out to monitor so here you change this to be monitor and output for instance because you want the monitor is your new output like the monitor is where your voice is now going um, and you want it to show up in teams that's what i do it's a kind of a slight change um, from what I said previously. I found this VB audio cable works really well. It's a really nice solution. Um, yeah, for me, uh, it seems to work really well and it allows me to use all the audio filters built into OBS um, to get a really nice audio quality for my Teams and Zoom meetings. Hi, Future Tom here from editing the video. Uh, I was putting the video together and just reviewing it and I realized actually I got all the way to the end of the video and I didn't talk about the one huge downside that I trailed right at the beginning when I said there was a massive spoiler, which is this. So OBS works by having an output and also optionally a monitor output. So the output is, you know, what goes when you stream uh, or when you uh, record. So that's the audio output. It just goes there, obviously. That's exactly how you'd expect it to work. And then it additionally has this monitor output where you can choose the device where a copy of the sound, if you like, uh, also goes. Now, the intent for this is that it goes to a set of headphones or something like that. So you can monitor the output that's being streamed and recorded. That's why it's called the monitor output. We're hijacking that 
and we're sending the monitor output to our special device that's the uh, the cable in so we can go and get it later from cable out. The downside here is that if you do that you now can't monitor the sound that's being sent. So if you if you do this and you jump on your Teams or your Zoom meeting, any audio that you're sending, you can't hear. Like you can't put your headphones on and hear if you're adding special effects, if you are, um, if you've got like a sound pad and you're adding different sounds, or you want to play music or anything like that. You won't hear it. Everybody else on the call will because it's being sent, but you're not getting a copy. There's no monitor um, feed for you to use. Now, for me, that's not an issue because I don't really kind of do that stuff with sound effects. It's really just my voice. And for me, the trade off of having the filtered sound go through OBS is totally worth it. I just wanted to mention that this is why it's not perfect. This is why there's still problems. Um, so if that's a problem for you, uh, like it, it still works. Like if you want to have like a soundboard and play sounds, you can set all that up in OBS um, and you know what the sounds are and other people will hear them, it's just like you won't get to enjoy the sound as well. And for, like, depending on your use case, that might be a real problem. So I wanted to make that clear. You're, we're hijacking the monitor output to send it off to Teams via the virtual audio cable. And the downside of that is that there is now no monitor. You can't monitor. All right, back to the video. All right, pretty kind of rushed video, threw it together, kind of not supposed to be super well edited. I wanted to just show you as an update um, what my setup was like. If you've got any questions, if there's stuff I haven't really covered off very well, do let me know. If you can't figure it out for yourself, let me know. I can do a more detailed, more polished video. Um, but I think a lot of you are 90% of the way there already. Um, but I wanted to give you that tip around that VB virtual audio cable because it might be the missing link you need to bring really good audio as well as uh, interesting and uh, good video to your Teams and Zoom meetings. All right. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.